We're in need of a light over our dining room table. And I have some ideas about that light and how I want to make it. One of the things I want to use is photogrammetry. I think that's how you say it. It's where you take a series of photos of something and the software will stitch those images together into a three-dimensional model. So I'd like to find a form that I can bring into the computer using photogrammetry. And the second thing that I'd like to do is to take that form and slice it up into a series of planes that can be cut out on the CNC machine. So we found a star fruit at the grocery store. I had been thinking of a banana or possibly an avocado, but then we found the star fruits and that just seemed like the perfect form for this. So in doing the photogrammetry, you photograph the object from all sides. So you sort of get a, a ring of images around the photo. So the software that I'm using is Meshroom and it's open source software, meaning it's free, <laughs> but it works pretty well. You bring your photos in, then you can check your photos and kind of make sure everything's okay. Now the line of boxes at the bottom are all of the steps that it's going to take to build the model. And there's lots of different options down there to refine the way that it builds the model. But there's absolutely no documentation on what any of it does. <laughs> but if you just bring your photos in and hit start, it does a pretty good job of building the model with the default settings. So my first attempt kind of worked, but it gave me a lot of sort of boogers around the fruit that I was going after. And I decided that this software probably wants some background to understand the camera positions as it was trying to make my white background part of the model, I think. <laughs> so I put the star fruit on my glue table and rotated that with an X made of blue tape. And this gave the object a background and this really seemed to help as now it didn't have all of the, the sort of digital foam around the model. But the star fruit itself wasn't really coming out that well. And what I know of the way the software works, it doesn't want reflections and it doesn't want sharp shadows as that confuses it about what the actual physical shape of the, of the object is. So my star fruit was a little bit too shiny so I decided I could sacrifice my star fruit and paint it gray. I found a spray paint can of primer that I had, and that would give me a nice flat gray for the form of the fruit. And this actually worked really well. So I then re-photographed the star fruit with the X, my turning board with sort of a speckly pattern on it, and the gray star fruit. And it was about the same where the background was pretty good, but the, the fruit itself just didn't quite come out all that good. So I had seen a video a year or two ago where someone was doing something similar to this and they had spray painted their object with the fake stone paint that sort of gives it a, a random speckly pattern. So I found a can of black spray paint and didn't shake it too well and kind of sprayed a splotchy sort of random point pattern on my fruit. And this gave the software something to look at, sort of something to focus on in the image. And it gave me a much nicer model. This was the way to do it. <laughs> so now what I realized at this point was that I had just put the star fruit down on a little block of wood, and it meant I was missing that part of the fruit. What I thought I would do is to make a little stand to hold the star fruit vertically. So I cut a block of wood and drilled a hole through it and put a nail through the block of wood. And the nail will hold the fruit up so it can stand up vertically. So the fruit went on the nail just fine. 
And my first batch of photos, I had the fruit up from the block of wood so that the, the fruit and the, the wood base were separated a little bit. But when I ran this through Meshroom, the fruit didn't show up. It's like it needs to have everything connected. It really didn't like having an object floating above the background. So I pushed the fruit down on the nail so it was touching the wood and re-photographed, and that worked really well. So now I had a model of the star fruit. And what I'm realizing after this process is that you see these photogrammetry tutorials online, and they always go out in the woods and they photograph a boulder, and they say, look at how amazing this software is, it can model this object that would be extremely hard to model by hand, which is true. But after going through this process, a randomly speckled rock in the shade with a nice background is the perfect object for this software. At this point, I had a model that I could bring into Fusion 360 and start to clean it up. So I, I cut off the parts that I didn't want and you can simplify the mesh. So I simplified that quite a bit as Meshroom gives you a very dense mesh of your object, which is really nice because it's detailed, but Fusion has a hard time dealing with that. If you want to get Fusion to do Boolean operations, your model has to be set to a certain type and it needs to be below 10,000 faces, which is fine for what I'm gonna be doing with it, but it meant simplifying it quite a bit from what I got from Meshroom. I cleaned up the bottom, then I got it into a form that I could run Boolean operations on, meaning that I could add and subtract to it and squish it. So I lengthened it up to five feet and I sort of squished it and made it a little squatter. Then at this point, I was thinking I was gonna make it into a light. So I subtracted out a cylinder out of the middle to put light tubes in. And a lot of this is just me messing around with different ways of possibly pulling the top off or making some kind of connection to that inner cylinder. I'm still not quite sure how I want to attach this to the ceiling. Now, once I had a form that I liked, I can bring this into Fusion Slicer. I guess that's what it's called. There's an add-on to Fusion that will take your model and you can, can sort of slice it up in various ways. So I set up my form with a sort of single slice down the long length, like a spine, and then I think 21 cross sections through the form. And once I had that set up, it'll give me the patterns for those. Now I brought those into Rhino where I can edit the line work. And you could certainly do this in Fusion, but I'm just more comfortable in the sort of AutoCAD Rhino world. <laughs> and I can fix some of the problems that the model had at this point. And from there, these shapes can be cut. Now at this point, I was still thinking I was gonna make a light and that's still the plan, but I took a sidestep at this point and decided I should cut out a smaller version, sort of as a study model, kind of to see if this would work before I start to use a whole bunch of plywood on this. <laughs> I sort of scaled it down. It's about a quarter the size of what I was thinking would be full size. So I had it cut the text that it put on the shape so that I could keep track of which piece was what. Then I could cut out the cylinder that runs down the length on the inside. And once I had those cut, I could cut out the star shapes. One thing I've always liked about computer work, or one, one thing I've always tried to do is to get the, the sort of dirt or the, the, the randomness of the outside world into the digital world. And that's, I think, what I like about this process. And then back out again. So I could clean up the shapes. I sanded the two surfaces of the stars really lightly. And I lightly went around all the edges. And it can go 
go together. And it actually went together on the first, the first attempt. I kind of had my doubts, <laughs> but it, it went together really easily. All right, um, what do you guys think? It, do we need a light in this room? We do need a light. <laughs> it feels like we're at the Natural History Museum and there's a blue whale skeleton on our ceiling. So is it, is it gonna be too thick? Thick as in it's like gonna hang down hang too down far. too far. I think only when we're like, you know, bending over to cut like a Because it's probably gonna be dick down here no. somewhere. No, I think that's only gonna be a problem for like... And I'm still not entirely sure what kind of material it should be. I've always figured it would be plywood, but plywood could get a little heavy. So hopefully, shortly, there will be a part two to this video where this gets made into a light for our dining room. Yeah. But we aren't going to move Does that make some kind of track for it? So we aren't going to unmove the table. I don't think the table's set pretty set. much. Yeah. Or we'll make the final decision and then we can go to light. Thanks for watching.